Bob and Cherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Cherry. Oh, my God, it's better than I thought. Welcome to the Bob and Cherry Show with Bob. Blah, 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 blah. And Sherry. Is she a full-blown Woody Lou or what? And now, broadcasting from the palatial Bob and Sherry Studios, it's Bob and Sherry. So we were talking with Lamar, the people's movie critic, uh, the other day, and uh, we were asking, how is your daughter doing? Because his daughter lives in Japan, and she has married a Japanese uh, guy and is really enjoying life there. And I was thinking about that when I came upon this account documenting cool things and interesting things that are normal in Japan. And I want to land on one of them. I'll just I'll burn through a few of them. These are things that are normal in Japan and not so not so normal here in the USA. Vending machines that sell broth. Uh, tipping <laughs> is considered rude. Wait, the wait, just of, broth? Just broth. Just broth. Yeah. Just For broth. those times when you just go, you know, I could do with some broth. <laughs> I need some broth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, maybe happen. maybe you got a cold or something like that. You're still get going into work, even though you shouldn't. You get some broth. The inside of trains are quiet, even during uh, rush hour. Um, All of the food in restaurant windows is all fake, and everybody knows it's fake, and they're fine with that. Uh, What else? Uh, Shrines are found in shopping malls. The streets are very, very clean. Slurping noodles is considered polite. There is almost no theft. But the one that really jumped out at me, these are things that are common in Japan, Eating alone in a restaurant is very, very common. And Sherry used to say to me, how can you eat? How can you eat alone? And my wife, even more so, would say, you mean, especially when we were first uh, dating, she said, what did you do for lunch? You went to a restaurant. You sat by yourself. That's weird. Do people look at you? And for me, it's just the most common thing in the world, especially after doing this show. If I get a late lunch. I've been talking to you people for hours. I just want to sit and eat. I don't want to engage anybody else in what's going on in their life. That is common in Japan. Is it that strange here in the United States to see somebody eating alone? I don't think so anymore. Um, I Because people are on their devices now, so you don't even really register it. And I think people, it used to be women were especially hesitant to eat alone yeah. for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. But that's changed too. Right. Um, and and I agree with you. After having to talk all day long to us, yeah, you need a break. You deserve a break. I know. Do you do you think it is more common for women to uh, to eat alone? Mary was uh, visiting one of her relatives out of state, and and she said and she was staying in a hotel, um, and she said, "I just got up from uh, eating in the bar downstairs. I'm so proud of myself." She said, "I never would have done that." Um, a couple of years ago, but I just did, and there was no problem. Nobody hit on me. It was it was fine. That's one of the challenges to um, eating alone if you're a woman mm-hmm. and like your wife mm-hmm. is really hot. Is that you? You're just there to have a salad. You're not looking for a date. <laughs> you're not. You know what I mean. And sometimes you just you just want to be left the heck alone, and and it's kind of hard. Oh, hang on, hang. Oh. What's Y'all matter? talk amongst yourselves. I know that that's the problem I always have when I eat by myself in a restaurant. I'm like, please, Hello? please, enough. I know, leave me alone. Leave I just me alone. Just want to eat. Right. <sighs> no, with I, I don't want to go to your hotel room, okay? Leave me alone. Um, I, if you're a guy and you see an attractive woman, though, and she is alone, I mean, how do you tell whether or not she would be if you're, if you're, you're single, you don't see a ring on her finger? How do you know that it would be okay to go up and um, usually when I get maced in the, when I get maced in the face by her body, <laughs> that's, usually, a no. that's the that's a no, I yeah. think. It's a signal yeah. of some kind. Yeah. I mean you see these guys, they're so suave in the movies, right? They 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 sit at the bar and there's a woman having a cocktail and all of a sudden, you know, um, are you from out of town and all of that? If, I, I was just never very good at that. I'm sorry about that, you guys. I have been trying to get a meningitis B vaccine for my kid. And um, because I don't want, you know, her brain to get inflamed while she's at school. And you would think that that I had um, held up my hand and asked for 
a shark with a laser on its head and a billion dollars. I am just being <laughs> driven insane trying to get this damn vaccine for my kid. Sorry. Did about you get that. it done? Was that an was that a uh, an appointment? That was well. I'd made I I made an appointment and sent her and when she got there they said oh we don't we're all out of that sorry and so she came home so i made an appointment and they called me back and confirmed it and then they just okay. i got a robo call just now before the sun is even up uh once again confirming this appointment so um i i, I well, don't the, know what the I, next the next call you're going to get is going to be a call or an email saying uh could you please comment and rate how the uh, phone call went for our gonna, business uh, and review it online. Uh, here's what yeah. I'm here's here's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that if I don't go ahead and get that extended warranty for my car that Angie and Rebecca keep calling about, I'm not going to make it to this appointment right. to get this shot that I've had. Bob, I have been on the phone more about meningitis B than I have talked to a family member this week. I've been on the phone so much with it. I, you what know what? Parent- can I- can I just go say, I, I hate modern life. I've just decided. I just completely hate modern life. I want to go live in a cabin in the woods. I'll give up Wi-Fi. I'll give up Netflix if my phone could just stop ringing with crap. It's true. <sighs> it, it is absolutely maddening. It's Bob and Sherry. Swag you can use. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com. The other day, we were talking about how in the movies, certain things happen that... It just doesn't go that way in real life. And we only got through a few of them. And I want to bring the rest of them up right now if we can. Um, Here's a scene in the movie that it just doesn't happen that way in real life. Lead actor sits down at a bar and he says, get me a beer. The movie bartender silently gets the beer. In real life, here's the bartender. Oh, you want a beer? What kind of beer? We've got 20 beers on tap and here's an extensive bottle list. Do you want a menu with that, too? I know you're it's so just, right. I always think about yeah. that. What do you have? A beer? Oh, you yeah. just can't say that. Yeah, you can't even say that in someone's house. And, and, and the bartender will go, hi, my name's Bud. I'm your bartender today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you never do that to, to get a better tip. Um, becoming popular after taking down your ponytail and removing your nerdy glasses. That's That's kind of a cliche. I mean, the movies have even made fun of themselves because of that one. In movies, this this one, uh, it's in so many movies. What was the movie where it was uh, Tom Cruise? He was in the service. Jack Nicholson was the uh, oh, um, a few good host. men. A few good men. A few good men, and he nails Jack Nicholson right there. He gets him and shows the uh, the judge and the jury exactly who he is. In the movies, with any kind of trial scene, there is always that dramatic moment, like I just discussed, where one of the attorneys presents a witness or a piece of evidence. It completely changes the course of the trial. Neither the judge or the opposing attorney attorney knew anything about it. That does not happen in real life. You have to have a uh, a deadline for discovery. You have to tell the opposing attorney what you're bringing up. So they're never surprised completely. After every lovemaking scene in the movie, there's no need to get up and go anywhere. It's just you just get on with your life. Without getting specific, that's not real life. A girl waking up with perfect hair and a face full of perfectly done makeup. I don't care how pretty you are. That's probably not the situation at 7 a.m. Do you remember a a lot of uh, famous women, including like Tammy Faye Baker did this. But do you remember um, we talked to someone and I can't remember who it was who would get up in the morning at like four o'clock, put all of her makeup on and then slide quietly back into bed so that her husband just thought she woke up looking like that. It was it was somebody that that. I remember the story. It was somebody that that we worked with in the building. And I. Yeah. and yeah. she, and then she was one of the first people I knew to get tattooed permanent like eyeliner and lip liner to save oh, yeah. herself a few minutes at 4 a.m. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah, exactly. In the movies, whenever anybody plays something back, you know, it might be a tape recorder, a video recording or whatever, they can always fast forward or rewind to exactly the point they want with perfect accuracy. It's just they hit it. It zooms for one second. And then they find the pickup point just like that. Can I Whereas, tell you? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah another, no, thing, another thing that they do is they go, can you separate that sound out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, right. No. I, right. I, no. I, liked, 
I like too when they say when they say, "Can you can you zoom in to that grainy photo?" And then they'll zoom right. in, and you can see the perpetrator's face and and also like his phone number on his phone. Meanwhile, yeah. you have you could have a picture of your dog on your phone right now and zoom in. Yeah. You can't see what's in the background. Yeah, that's exactly right. In the movies, there's always a bunch of high school students, but somehow they look like they're approaching 30, and yet you're asked to buy that. One oh, that, movie yeah. after yeah. another. Obviously, Grease is the perfect example of this. They did. Remember, the, there was a movie called Porky's, and they did like three of them. By the time yeah. they got to the third one, some of the guys in it had receding hairlines. They looked well, like they were retirement age. Even Beverly Hills 90210, which I dearly, dearly loved in the day. And Dylan Perry, um, uh, Luke, Luke Perry's Dylan McKay character. Mm-hmm. It's the rare high school junior that has laugh lines. It just is. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's very true. And finally, in the movies, there are guns with no recoil. And the guy who is shooting it one shot after another is not wearing hearing protection. And yet he doesn't go deaf. If you fire certain guns, they are very, very loud. Well, how about the the scene where the guy gets shot in the leg, but he just he just keeps going. He keeps going. <laughs> he keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah, if you shot stop. me in the leg with a with like a yeah. rubber band, it would stop me in my tracks, yeah. much less with a bullet. Morons right. in the news is next, and it's a special edition of Morons in the News as we say goodbye to summer 2021. We round up the top morons so far. Who's going to be the winner? It's next. It's Bob and Sherry. We've got them. Morons. With Bob and Sherry. He's a moron. It's morons in the news. It's so hard to pick a favorite moron in, in, in the news for summer 2021. There are so many, but we wanted to bring in fall with a bang by saying goodbye to some of our favorites like for example (laughs) the woman who didn't have any training or dentistry license pulled a person pulled someone's teeth all 13 of them i remember that that. yes i got arrested or how about the guy in louisiana who stole a ring from his girlfriend pawned it and used that money to buy her an engagement ring remember that guy Mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. or how about the woman who got her ex's car? She was so mad that he dumped her that she sneaked in, got his keys, took his car, and ran 49 red lights so that he would get all the tickets. That was fun, right? That was a good one. I don't, oh, yeah. You know, I don't remember that one. She ran how many? 49. 49. Or, or what about the Florida man who came home from a doctor's appointment and found a woman skinny dipping in his pool in the backyard? Um, he called the sheriff's office and she just wouldn't leave. It was hot and she was swimming and you can just mind your own business and stop staring. That was a good one, right? Yeah. How about, you know, how about you know, before you go on, before you go on, the woman who did it with the 49 traffic lights, that's probably a city that has cameras with the traffic lights. So she, she was probably not pulled over even one time. She just timed it. Yeah. So that the photograph would be taken yep, exactly. of her ex's license plate. That's kind of evil genius, actually. And he just was bombarded with one letter yeah. after another from the yeah. DMV. <laughs> or, or is our oh. favorite this elderly gentleman who had in his basement in his house a Nazi-era German tank and any aircraft gun, a torpedo, machine guns, and yeah. multiple assault rifles, plus yeah. boxes and yeah. boxes of ammo. Sure, he's right. a good one. He's a good one. Or or is it the lady that was using the gun laser, you know, targeting thing to play with her cat and accidentally shot her friend? Or is it the dude? <laughs> I like that one. Is wait, it the wait, dude? wait, 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 wait. What, what was she doing? What was she, she was doing using the laser target sight on a handgun as a cat toy and accidentally shot her friend. Oh, my. That was a good God, one. Or, awful. or. Or is it the pilot in Saskatchewan who landed his plane illegally so he could go get himself a Dairy Queen? That's a good one, too. I remember that. I had that one, yeah. But our favorite, our favorite has to be this gentleman in South Carolina. And the reason that we picked this as our favorite is there were no weapons involved. There were no drugs involved. There was no violence. Nobody got hurt. Um, deputies went into a house in Oconee, South Carolina, 
after they got a call from a woman who said, Y'all, I just saw my nephew go by on a horse, and he definitely does not own a horse. You, know, you might want to look in on that. So the deputies the deputies went to Gary Chase Coble Jr.'s house, and they tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't open the door, and they couldn't make out what he was saying. Then they called Gary Chase Coble Jr.'s daddy, who owns the house, and the dad said, Oh, Gary, Gary Chase Coble Jr. is not allowed in that house. He is not supposed to be there. So the cops went in. And they couldn't help but notice piles of horse feces all over the living room. And it was that time. It it was that time one deputy wrote in the report, quote, I observed a full size quarter horse standing in the middle of a bedroom. The horse was calmly hanging out in the bedroom and just kind of looking around. Deputies took uh, Mr. Coble into custody and they still couldn't understand him. And the only thing that they were able to figure out was that the horse's name was Jubilee. Gary Gary Chase Coble Jr. stole Jubilee from a nearby pasture, rode it home, was spotted by a relative who called the law, and then hid the house, hid the horse inside his daddy's house. Jubilee how is old fine. Was, how old was Gary? How old was Gary? He's in his 20s. Jubilee, his the 20s. horse is fine. He's facing charges for livestock theft, and he was already wanted on multiple other charges including one for throwing a ukulele into a pasture. <laughs> Folks. Boy, he has a really um, <laughs> exciting life. Bizarre, but that exciting. Is... Folks. I guess the, um, the, the cops had to say, I want to see a man about a horse, right? Gary Chase Coble Jr. has a lot going on, and none of it is involving his IQ. <laughs> We're going to post this as our favorite moron of the summer just because you can't make this kind of stuff up and nobody got hurt. You're going to find it on the Bob and Sherry Facebook. Keep it right here. We've got comedian Dave Burley coming up. And what sort of quasi bogusy, sciencey thing is having the biggest moment ever? And you're hmm. probably checking it every single day to see what's in store for you. It's all coming up. It's Bob and Sherry. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. I have several friends who are lawyers and I was chatting with one of them not long ago and uh, we're talking about our jobs and he said, if I had it to do all over again, I would not be a lawyer. I said, you're kidding me because this guy's pretty successful. I said, why would, why would you uh, not want to be a lawyer again? He said, well, there, there's just a lot more than you think. You have all of these open cases that are going on at once, people you're representing, and it's very hard work. And to be honest with you, about half the time, we lawyers hate who we're representing. And I never thought about that because that's your job. Even if you don't like the person that you're representing, that's still they still have the right to a lawyer. Even though they might be sleazy business people, you're still the guy that has to put the best face forward and try to save them in one way or the other. But you know in your heart, I am representing a real bad guy. And so I was really interested remembering that in this uh, comment. A bunch of lawyers got together online. And they talked about some of the biggest doofuses they were ever stuck with in uh, in court representing. Listen to this one. This was a woman who had to defend a small-time uh, delinquent. Before going to court, he asked her what he should do. And she explained to him if he was cooperative and truthful, his sentence would be milder. After hearing the case, the judge asked him, is there anything else that you would like to add? And he got up and he explained to the judge, and I'm quoting, my counsel told me to be truthful. So I wanted to tell you that not only did I do the live robbery that I'm here for, I also did several others in the region over the last year. He continued to admit to several robberies that were unsolved. And everyone, even the state attorney, was majorly face palming. <laughs> that... <laughs> That is who you get stuck with. You and know, there's um, an, my youngest ahead. wants to be a lawyer. And yeah. we, were talk- we were talking about the difference between being a defense lawyer and being a prosecutor or whatever. Yeah. And, and here's where we land it. The mark of a great defense attorney is giving you a great defense, even if they think you're a filthy dirtbag. 
because the mm -hmm. Constitution gives you the right to that the fair right. trial. So yeah. it's not about, do I like you? Can I tolerate right. you? Do I want to be your friend? Is Am I able to set the fact that you make my skin crawl aside and give That's you it. the defense you deserve, which is why the two of us cannot be defense attorneys, because I'm not sure job. that we could. Listen, listen to this one, Sherry. My client was charged with assault for biting off someone's nose. I was cross-examining a witness for the prosecution. Me. Sir, did you see my client bite off this man's nose? The witness. No, sir, I did not. Me. Okay, then. Well, how do you know it was my client who bit off this man's nose? Witness. I saw him spit it out. <laughs> oh, <God>. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Usually they, you know, they all know uh, what's going to happen. But in that case, they were completely blindsided. How, how did you know that anybody was going to say that? I wish I had chimes to ring. I know. I wish I, I wish I could see somebody spit out a whole human nose. Because really? I can picture it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not the sort God. of thing. It's not the sort of thing that you're going to see. And you're like, if you see a person spitting out another human being's nose, you have experienced something so rare and special and, and bizarre. Disgusting. I don't want to see just well, because it's, it's, rare, it's rare for a reason. Yeah, but you know what? Disgusting. Like, Life, and especially in the pandemic, life is just the same old thing over and over and over again until you just want to slam your head in the door. To see one of my neighbors spit out a human nose, that's worth getting up for. I'm here for it. Sometimes I think I don't know you. I would know. I, 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 there's no way I would want to see something like that. I, I don't know why. Why do you want to live such a boring life? Bring on the spitting out of other people's pleasant. noses. Because it's more it's pleasant. Boring. Why do you want to lead a, lead a life of disgusting <laughs> images Bobby you'll did. never forget? Here's what Bobby did. Do you know how disgusting that is? There are so many germs in the nose. You don't want to put that true. in your mouth. It's I want true. A, it's true. I want a skid to judgment covered with dings and body damage and rust and screaming, St. Peter, did you see that guy spit out a human nose? That's I'm how gonna, I want to I'm going to wave to you as you as you skid by. It's Bob and Sherry. I live in a world of sound. I have earbuds in all the time. Earbuds for work, earbuds when I'm out walking with the dog, earbuds when I'm cleaning the house. And since I've discovered Raycon wireless earbuds, I'm really a happy camper. And here's why. A couple of reasons. First, Raycons are super comfortable. They have the perfect snug in-ear fit. They don't stick out at all. You honestly forget you're wearing them. Never thought I'd be able to say that about in-ear earbuds. And they have incredible sound. And they cost about half the price of other premium audio brands. And wait for this a 32 hour battery life. So you pop your Raycons in and you get on with your day and you're not constantly worried about having to recharge and, and stop what you're doing. And with Raycons, whether you're listening to music or a podcast with Raycon or the radio with Raycons, you've just got crisp, beautiful, clear sound. And again, at about half the price of other premium audio brands. And if you've never tried wireless earbuds and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to love that. The Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you really can't lose. You give them a try, you'll see what I mean. You're going to love the battery life. You're going to love the sound quality. You're going to love the comfortable fit. You're going to love the price. You can create your very own soundtrack to the day with Raycon. Right now, Bob and Sherry listeners can take 15% off their Raycon order at buy, B-U-I, Raycon.com slash Sherry. That's buyraycon.com slash Sherry. You'll save 15% on your whole order. So when the world gets crazy, you pop in your Raycons and you tune it out to your own private soundtrack. 15% off buyraycon.com slash Sherry. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. But you know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com.
It's the Bob and Sherry Store's Sizzlin' Summer Sidewalk Sale. Everything in stock is on sale, 10% off. 10% off! Including Sherry Lynch's cookbook, Cooking with Cats. And swag you can use, like Bob and Sherry 24-ounce latte mugs, travel mugs, H2Go water bottles, and our very hot line of Mother of All Mothers merch, including tote bags, candles, wear-around tea and sleep shirts. 10% off! It's the Sizzlin' Summer Sidewalk Sale. Everything is 10% off. Just hit Shop at BobandSherry.com and use the discount code PODCAST at checkout. Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. All right, I saved something especially for you, Bob. There's an, uh, a Twitter uh-huh. that I follow, uh, Uberfax, and um, right, right as we went on break, they posted a question. What is the pettiest, silliest, most insignificant hill you're willing to die on? <laughs> and I'm re- I'm reading these responses and they're gold. Like um, I'll just I'll run through a couple of them real quick. Um, Chicago pizza ain't pizza. It's tomato soup in a bread bowl. Cream cheese belongs only in savory foods. Don't put it in my frosting. Um, stop using the word literally because ninety nine percent of the time you're literally using it incorrectly. <laughs> I like that one. Um, here's another one. Keep salt out of my caramel. (laughs) Pineapple is good on pizza. Doors should always be closed, especially cabinet doors. I thought you would like that one. Amen. I'll tell you what, whoever these people are, they're my friends. Continue. Hot dogs or sandwiches. That's been an ongoing debate, by the way. Here's another one. Point Break isn't a movie about parachuting. It just has parachuting in it. Mint and chocolate do not go together. You thin mints. <laughs> I disagree with that one. <laughs> um, what's another one? Let's see. The office is funnier than Shit's Creek. I've almost gotten divorced three times over fighting about this. This is a serious, serious issue. You know, um, I agree with that person, too. I tried to get into S Creek. Allie was was calling me like every four days. Are you watching it yet? Are you watching it yet? And I love the performers, especially Catherine o- O'Hara. But I just didn't think it was all that funny. Um, you have to get through the first season. The first really? season, once you get through the first season, which yeah. I know sounds kind of rough. It's kind of like, just grit your teeth and think of the queen. But the, <laughs> the first right, season, right. you got to get through the first season. All right, here's one, another one. What is the most petty hill you're willing to die on? This guy says, when people pronounce it aluminium instead of <laughs> aluminum, it grinds me. <laughs> Wait, it, did he just move to Great Britain? Nobody in the so, United yeah. States does that. Um, Marvel movies are terrible. That's the petty hill the Stefanuch is willing to die on. Um, another guy says, all soccer should be sucked down and banned, and any money left over should be donated to charity. Wow, <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> That Here's, that one I don't agree with. Let very briefly the Marvel movie thing. Um, I I thought that Wonder Woman was was really good, and I saw uh, what was the latest one, um, Black, uh, uh, Black Spider, Panther. Black Panther? Black n- n- no, the, the the one where uh, Scarlett O'Hara is uh, the, the heroine. Um, it, it just it just came out. Black Widow. Black Widow. Is that is that what it was, Black Widow? Yeah, it, yeah, it shows yeah. you it shows you the impression that, that it made on me. I, I watched it and you know I saw it in a theater and I just thought, mm, okay, it's it's just they're all kind of alike. And I know that Marvel people are screaming at me right now, but for me they're all kind of alike. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you guys what petty hill you die on, but I have to read um, this one from Lost Pixie. Free gift is redundant. The gift is either free or it's not a gift. Also, <laughs> onions are evil AF. <laughs> the petty hill you're willing to die on. What is it for you? Let's start with Doc. What is the petty hill you're willing to die on? I am definitely on the pineapple belongs on pizza train. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I actually have it in one of the uh, dating profile I've had for forever. It says, I'm one of those weirdos who thinks it's okay to put pineapple on pizza. 
And I, I think that kind of explains why I'm not really getting any matches. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, how's the action these days? Wow, those women are being pretty petty, don't you think? <laughs> it's but you know, if you find one who's okay with pineapple on the pizza, she's a keeper. Get a ring on it. It's brave yeah. of you to say that because Bob thinks that pineapple on pizza is of the devil. I can't I believe like he's not ripping your head no, off for it. I know. <laughs> uh, speaking of pizza, if you want to come to me on it, I, I agree with the person with Chicago pizza. I just think it's a big mess. Um, <laughs> I will never, and my wife can, can buy the most expensive pair she can find. I will never wear flip flops. I hate them. I hate the way they feel. I hate the way they look on my feet. God bless you if you got beautiful feet, but uh, I hate flip flops. I will not go to the Golden Corral, and I don't use the word <laughs> irregardless. There's there's more than one Petty Hill. You're dying. Yeah. Oh, you're staked oh, oh, out I've, of mountain. I've got a mountain more. range. Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's got more. Max, I got a mountain a, range. Mine what's is, one for you? Mine is that vodka should not be flavored. You know, I, I mean, it, they've got like lemon flavored vodka and cherry flavored vodka. And my feeling is, do you want to drink or do you want a snow cone? Because if you want <laughs> a agree. snow cone, go yeah. to the boardwalk, find a vendor, get a snow cone. I feel that way about certain coffees with all of these added flavors. It's not coffee. It's punch. Um, here's one that I'm willing to die on. And this is very controversial. Do not be dipping your pizza in ranch dressing, you Mitigon. Amen. Why? Amen. Why do you blaspheme the food of my people Does, this way? I wonder if Papa John still sends butter with their pizza. Oh, remember these God, days? They they butter, do that? I mean, yes, they would send a thing of butter, and I would think to myself, this must not be very good pizza if they're butter. And you know, it was. Here's here, some somebody at Papa John's. The delivery guy's there, and and they they've ordered this just big old mess. And the owner says, "Hey, uh, I think this will kill him. But take some butter in case. We want to make sure he dies. <laughs> Who would put butter on pizza? It's Bob and Sherry. The Bob and Sherry website, the oddcast, contest info, bobandsherry.com. So I was out somewhere a few days ago, and I drove by this uh, storage unit place that I've never noticed before. And I started thinking, do, do you remember, it was a while ago, I had this moron in the news story about some people walking by a storage unit. I forget where, I think it was in Virginia. And they looked over, and smoke was billowing out of the storage unit, one of those outside storage units, you know, with a you know metal door going up. And so they called the fire department, the fire department came, and they did an investigation. And evidently, somebody had left some candles, several large uh, scented candles, and they caught fire with some clothing or, or whatever was combustible in there. The place went up to $165,000 worth of damage. And we were laughing about it. I was, I was saying, uh, I don't know what that guy was up to, but it, that's a hard sell. Hi, uh, I know we've just met in the bar here, but would you like to come to my private storage <laughs> unit later tonight? And I've decked it out quite romantically for us. What woman on the face of the earth would say yes to that? And so I started thinking about that. And I have never had an affair. You know, I mean, once I marry you, uh, you're stuck with me. And I, I've never fooled around on the side. I've never done any of that. But if you were to have an illicit affair, all right, a mm -hmm. couple of married people, and they're having an affair and they're, they're constantly worried about going to a hotel or going, you know, is, is she going to come home? Is he going to come home? They're going to get caught. Oh, my God, they're out in the backseat of a car. Here comes a cop or whatever. If you had one of those units, what would stop you? Now, let's this is you're not just dating someone. You're you're you've got a full relationship going on with this uh, extramarital affair. What would stop somebody from renting one of those units, getting the end unit? Most of the units are empty or not empty, but they're not they're not being used. People store stuff and, and that's it. I mean, I had one and I didn't go to it, you know, but every six months. What would stop you from moving in and setting up like a bedroom with 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 lamps and the bed and candles <laughs> <laughs> and a little refrigerator, a little mini bar that's in there. I, I and think you drive, you drive in and you park. It's behind a gate, right? It's behind. Nobody's going to be coming busting in. It's behind a gate. 
What would stop you from doing that? And I wonder if it is done. I think it is done. I've seen things online over the years um, about people doing that. Now you have to oh, be careful really? because yeah. some, you know, not all storage places are the same and some yeah. really will um, like have like 24 hour, like people doing security who are going to mm-hmm. notice if the lights are on or you're running a space heater or whatever. Because you're not allowed to live in one of these places, but people do do it because I've seen it. No, you can, you're not allowed to live, but you can hang out there because the one that I had, it was inside. Uh, they had outside units, but my unit was inside. And I would walk by another uh, one of the units, and this guy had a big unit and he was storing things, but he also set up a television, an easy chair. His dog was with him. I think he was just, you know, his wife said, please get out of my hair. I'm so sick of you, old man. Get out of my hair. He's retired. And he was, he was there. I, I saw him a half a dozen times. So you can pay visits to those things. Well, but you can't, you can't live in them. Like if you, no. if they see that you have, you're pulling electricity in, they, they're going to come for you, but people do it. Now the guy, we had a listener who lived in a store, a storage unit after his divorce for, I forget how long it was. It was months. It was wild. And, yeah. and he had to be really careful. Like he, he was at work during the day. That wasn't a problem. Right. And then he'd go to the gym or whatever after work. So he'd roll up to his storage unit after the employees who worked there were gone for the day. Right. And he kept it quiet and he kept it low key. But he did say that the weekends were tough because weekends People at storage places are busy and he didn't have anywhere yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but I mean, you could pull it off in the afternoon, you know, you're just, you're driving in, you're going in the storage unit, you close the thing. Anyway, so that's interesting. So you have, you have seen some posts on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Just do a search living in my storage unit. There's a whole world of people doing that. Is that that right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's Bob and Sherry. Get Bob and Sherry swag in our store at BobandSherry.com. It's that time. Everyone needs a laugh. Today, we're featuring comedian Dave Burley. Staying at a great hotel. They have me a lovely hotel right around the corner. It's beautiful. I travel the world, um, stay at the finest hotels. Usually the Chateau Cesse. Do you know of the Chateau Cesse? Okay, Motel 6, tomato, tomato, whatever. Um, I call it the Chateau Cesse. And they have a slogan at Motel 6. What is it? We'll leave the light on for you. I, I got an idea, Six. How about we wash the sheets? Could we do that? Could we, um, could we maybe raise the bar a little bit? I think I can get the light. That's the easy part, right? That's not in being very green, leaving the light on. I did. I flew in on an airline that will remain nameless. Uh, rhymes with American Airlines. And they have a little placard in their bathroom. It says, please be courteous to fellow passengers and wipe down the basin. I don't know what the basin is. And even if I did, I'm not wiping down anything in there, right? Because there's puddles everywhere. And people need to aim better. Ladies. Yes. No, the jig's up. A lot of you gals are not sitting down up there. You're like a helicopter hovering in an aircraft at 32,000 feet, right? Little Pilates in the sky? All right, this is good, okay. And then if you do hit turbulence, you just grab hold of that plastic handle, right? Oh, goodness gracious, I hope that's getting in there. I'd hate to be the next person that's gotta wipe down the basin. It's okay, just come clean. I recently flew out of L.A., uh, and in first class, as I was walking through, Bill Murray. Bill Murray. And I'm like, God will not let this plane go down with Bill Murray on it, right? And then Khloe Kardashian got on board. Yeah. 50-50 now, yeah? Right? You get that little Justin Bieber on there, that's going down. And on the East Coast, they're bringing back the age-old question, has anyone unbeknownst to you given you any gifts or packages? People beknownst to me don't give me gifts or packages. And who in their right mind is going to accept a gift or a package from someone in an airport, of all places, who's unbeknownst to them? 
I've never been at gate 24A and some guy's like, psst. Psst. Mr. Burley, this gift. This gift is for you. Oh, well, thank you. That's very nice of you. No, 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 no. Don't open it now. I'll open it in the sky for everyone to see. You know, that is very nice of you. You know, I didn't get your name. Of course you didn't. That's because I'm unbeknownst to you. <laughs> TSA has a new slogan. If you see something, say something, right? So if you see something out of the ordinary, you're supposed to report it. So I went up to the girl at the ticket counter and I said, I think my flight's leaving on time. <laughs> <laughs> that is comedian Dave Burley. Check it out on our website, B O B A N D S H E R I dot com. This is Bob and Sherry. Sign up for the newsletter with Bob and Sherry exclusive articles. Sign up now at Bob and Sherry dot com. So I saw something online the other day and it gave me an idea. I may have to go to the top drawer of my. Uh, my bureau in my bedroom and get out that gag gift I got for Christmas a couple of years ago, the old posing pouch and start my <laughs> own only fans channel. Listen, I was there's, reading, there's gold in them I, Nar Hills. Yeah. I got to tell you, I was reading about this one couple and they were knocking down $300,000 a month, allegedly. And I'm thinking I get on some bikini underwear, you know, let the ladies talk. Who's better at giving the ladies what they want than me? Now, normally that is a car or houses or a vacation in the Caribbean. But uh, I'm used to the women telling me what to do. And I think I could work. I think when I look at myself in the mirror right now after a shower, I think we're looking at $17.50 a month. Easy. Hey, that's, hey, hey. That's now. lunch. That's hey, lunch that's at lunch. Panera. <laughs> yeah. You're darn well, almost. <laughs> it's almost lunch at Premier. Yeah. What uh, has has OnlyFans? I've never been on any OnlyFans thing. Have they? What I was reading was there are couples that are making or women that are making like one hundred seventy five thousand dollars a month, and uh, OnlyFans said we're going to ban uh, ban adult content. Did they're I read gonna that? Ban, the other day? They're not banning nudity. They're banning. Mm -hmm pornography because they're trying to clean the site up from exploitation trafficking and abuse because you know you can't have nice things we can't just yeah. have you know like we, we can't just have some naughtiness it has to descend mm -hmm. into depravity and filth, filth. filth. so yeah. um, the right. platform is like y'all cannot behave so i'm turning this car around and we will allow nudity but that's where we're going to draw the line so there's there's no if if you discount nudity as being uh, posing like as a model if you discount that there's there's no sexual activity that's going to be allowed it, evidently it is now that's the that's the plan but you know these things uh -huh. are leak, leaky leaky boats so I'm sure some stuff will yeah. still get through um, they'll just soft core it up like Cinemax after dark but yeah they're trying to. there's some agree like anywhere on the internet there's some really mm -hmm. egregious content. And they are trying to clean it up before the site loses any respectability that it has. It is amazing how times have changed with just, uh, you know, two or three generations. I just don't see my grandmother, Shay Shay, getting involved in the uh, only uh, fans situation. If, if she did, she would she would require everyone to call her Mrs. Uh, George Slosser, which I th <laughs> which I think. Would take some of the spin, I don't know, out of uh, Shay Shay's whole thing there. There are there was bound to be somebody in your childhood neighborhood <clears throat> that would have had an OnlyFans. Uh, there's there are people all around us have these accounts. There's so much like amateur DIY adult content out there on the web. Somebody, I'm not going to, I know you, some of your childhood neighbor names, and I'm not going to name mm -hmm. them for fear one of them is listening and hears right. me say, how about Connie? Be <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But, <clears throat> oh, I know I think, who it would be. I yeah, know who I do, it would be. I think there are people, I think we all grew up with that one house in the neighborhood where anything was possible. That was Mrs. Smith. 
her real her real name was actually Mrs. Smith. Mm-hmm. I think if your name is Mrs. Smith, you might as well get up to something. <laughs> it, big, it makes pa- big pies. <laughs> it makes check. It makes checking into hotels out of town much easier, you know, because you got the ID. That was that was her name, Mrs. Smith. Yeah, and uh, all of the, I was like seven years old or younger. All of the women, I didn't understand what was going on, but all of the women, uh, my mother, uh, Navard Lane next door, and other women in the neighborhood, when they got together, they were always talking about her. Because she was the one where one of the local doctors would come by fairly often while Mr. Smith was at work. And, you know, the joke started, oh, she must really have a problem with that bronchial uh, deal, you know. And uh, and she wore she wore um, Bermuda shorts in the fall with those knee knee uh, stockings, not, not stocking socks, you know. That was a look like way like back gopher then. on the love boat. Wow, yeah, <laughs> it's hard. It's and hard to see it as sexy, but I'm trying. I'm it trying. It was sexy no, for no, women no. at one time, I think. No Bermuda shorts with uh, like schoolgirl uh, uh, socks, like Catholic schoolgirl socks. Right, that's what Gopher on the Love Boat wore: Bermuda oh, really? shorts and and knee socks. Yeah, it's the further. Yeah. It's like the most unsexy thing I can imagine. But I'm trying here with Mrs. Smith. Well, for a guy maybe, but for a woman, yeah. Look, yeah, for a woman, definitely. Yeah. The women in my family talked so much unbelievable smack about Ginny next door that I was in uh-huh. high school before I realized her last name wasn't actually next door. That she had a completely <laughs> different name. It sounds. And, it sounds like the title of a rock song from some guy in Canada. Yeah. Go ahead. At what what they didn't think that poor woman was getting up to. If Ginny next mm-hmm. door had any idea what her legend was, she'd probably be mm-hmm. thrilled. Nobody was living a life as interesting as they thought she was living. But today, and yeah, Ginny, Ginny next door would be a great name for an OnlyFans, wouldn't it? It would be. Oh, are you kidding? Yes. Yes, without a that. doubt. I just wonder how many, you know, people in any given town percentage-wise are saying, boy, this working stuff is really hard. Hey, sweetie, your your bot is just fantastic. Let's see what we can make. I wonder what the percentage is. Higher than you'd believe. You really think so? Yeah, I really, really, really do think so. I'm looking forward to that free lunch. Well, we're all looking forward to Posing Pouch, which is going to be the name of Bob's OnlyFans account. Yeah, it's that's Bob right. and Sherry. Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. Bob and Sherry, go. All right. When I saw this, when the YouTube algorithm served this up to me, I thought, oh, my God, Bob is going to love this. So this is a snippet from Family Guy. It starts off being about yellow snow, and then it jumps to, because only Family Guy can do this. <laughs> no, it jumps. Right. It jumps from yellow snow to a reality that every single one of us has experienced and never really thought much about, and that is what pizza restaurants everywhere do to a salad. Here goes. Hey, check it out. Lemon snow. What? Yeah, that stuff's delicious. Lemon snow? You mean it just falls from the sky like that? You bet. One of nature's treats. You gonna have some? Nah, I'm already full. But you should have some before the other kids get to it. What is it, like Italian ice? Yeah, exactly, like a sorbet. (laughs) Ah, That's not lemon! No, it's not. You bastard! I was having fun playing in the snow, and now you've ruined it like a pizza place ruins a salad! Okay, four pizzas and a salad. Salad? How do you make a salad? First, you throw in the whole head of lettuce. Even the hard-to-eat white part at the bottom? That's what the people want. Now, what else? I got a can of whole black olives. Should I slice them up? What are you, crazy? No, you keep them whole. You're going to want to know you've got an olive in your mouth. What about this tomato? Cut it into thirds. It should be big enough to pretend you've got red teeth. How about this carrot? Should I cut it up? Yes, but very thin lengthwise. The whole length of the carrot. One thin slice. Okay, what else do we got? Well, we got these hot peppers, but... You can't really eat them. No problem. Dump them all in. (laughs) Now, should we put it in a bowl? No, let's put it in a lasagna tray. Okay, great. I'll take it. (laughs) Oh, and make sure to stick it right on top of the pizza so it stays nice and warm. Hello, every pizza place. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that is so right on the money. That is so funny. 
pizza salad most of the time. Not not at a place I go to, Portofino's. They have they have great salads, but so many of them, it's just that iceberg lettuce, a bunch of crap, you know? It's the iceberg lettuce, the giant tomatoes, the two black yeah. olives, the ribbon of carrot, and the three pepperoncini peppers. <laughs> this show, that's the thing about Family Guy. Like, you'll just be bopping along, and then and yeah. it'll be goofy or silly or profane or whatever, and then they will nail a hardcore human right. truth. Like right. what pizza restaurants do to salad. I loved it. And, and because it, because there are characters and it's a cartoon, it's actually a little bit funnier than if you were listening to a stand-up comic do it. I mean, a stand-up comic could do a thing on pizza salads, but it's it's better on Family Guy. Everything is better on Family Guy. I <laughs> I went I spent part of my um insomnia watching old black and white movies. Um, And have since shifted to um, putting the blanket up over my head so I can stay in my bed and Mm -hmm. letting YouTube just serve me up one thing after another and snorting to myself in the middle of the night, which is not really fair to my husband. But, oh, well, (laughs) I I used to watch Family Guy, uh, but my girlfriend said it's so ridiculous when adults are watching cartoons. And I was like, oh, okay. So I don't watch Family Guy at all anymore, unless she goes for like her girlfriend's be- weekend at the beach, and then it's like the TBS Family Guy marathon. Isn't you know, I and don't it's know behind why. her back. It's yeah. behind sure her it back. It's naughty. I don't know why we why any of us want to be in a relationship or married because the minute the minute they they leave the house we revert to being our truest most authentic selves which is it's crazy. True. I told you when Kev Kev is um off taking care of the twin babies as we speak. The minute he leaves the house I'm like, "Yeah, girl, somebody's watching UFO documentaries." <laughs> and I found I just found another one on like Showtime or something. The minute his back is turned, that's all I want to do. The minute her back is turned, you're watching Family Guy and cartoons. The minute her Love. back is turned, I'm watching reruns of The Sopranos. Yeah. Love is a mysterious thing, y'all. And it, it, really, it really gets in the way of your favorite TV. <laughs> we'll post the uh, pizza salad clip on our Facebook. It's Bob and Sherry. The Off Air Podcast, the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. Oddcast. Download on the free Bob and Sherry app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Bob and Sherry. So a minute ago, we were talking about Family Guy because we played that rabbit hole bit of uh, what pizza restaurants do to salads. It's up on our Facebook right now if you want to watch it. It's very funny. And um, the great thing that we were talking amongst ourselves during the break that um, Family Guy was able to do things because it was a cartoon that live action shows couldn't get away with. Um, long before the rest of the world was talking about R. Kelly, for example, being um, a, a sex offender and a predator, Family Guy was doing it. Family Guy was mm-hmm. way out on the bleeding edge of a lot of these big breaking news stories. But Family Guy could also do little things that would have been hard to fit. Like it would have been hard to put some of this into the mouths of live action sitcom characters and this is just we max has a really short clip for you here and when you hear this you'll go that's exactly what it sounds like and it's 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 actually really brilliant family guy gets hit for the content the adult language and all of that but there are all kinds of moments in it that are absolutely brilliant like this Peter, you've been fiddling with that ham radio for seven weeks. Take a shower. I can barely get any reception on this stupid thing. So far, the only station that comes in is some British guys reading news from places I'm not sure exist. Today, in <laughs> Kazakhstan, a peaceful demonstration turned to bloodshed as members of the Tuzili tribe flooded Kenpao Square in remembrance of the third anniversary of the Holmesburg massacre. But finally, some good news out of neighboring Kanduzi. As locals there have reached an uneasy alliance with the bordering Trolika Bubsy Wubsy Dahl. And now with sports, here's Frampel Tromwibbler. From the world of sport, the Coynton Spinky Wompers flumped the flowing boing Welfenklompers, 70 fluff to 40 flabe. At the tone, the time will be 26 Railroad. God. I'm not, not any of that. <laughs> I watch BBC so America, true. and even mm-hmm. BBC America is that way. If know, you... It's, if, if you're ever you, know, you know what it is when you listen to the BBC, it is uh, they're so well done. I mean, it really is perhaps the best news organization in the world, but it's exactly as they just presented it. And you are faced with the 
decision. Should I stay with something that is just boring me to death and I really don't have a total grasp of? Or should I just bail out and say, it's just not for me right now. Good luck, world. I hope you work it out. (laughs) If you're ever driving late at night, and you're trying to stay awake. Um, this happens to me. Well, it used to happen a bunch when Karen Mia was dancing. She'd be sleeping in the seat next to me. And I'm, I'm coming home after a long day or weekend. And uh, I'm okay, I've had all the murdery news I can take. And I, I can't listen to music because it makes me sleepy. So I'm punching around. And I would always stop at the BBC World Service just because it was so civilized, even though a lot mm-hmm. of times, like in this Family Guy skit, I had no idea what they were talking about because they mm-hmm. would be doing a story about Welsh rye farmers. This is at right. like two o'clock in the morning, Welsh right. rye farming, right? And But it would be so like civilized and the voices were so perfect. And it's so different from what you get on American cable news, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Where, yeah. where it constantly feels like, as Lamar once said, and I never forgot it, all right, all right, everybody, let's you and him have a fight where it's just so raucous and rough. And on the BBC, they make everything, even the most horrific tragedies, seem manageable. Like, you know what? Keep your heads about you. We're going to get through this together. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, Cable news has its own sort, and and some of it's very good, but it has its own sort of uh, vibe, its own sort of energy, which could be negative or positive. The difference between cable news and, and just a regular newscast like on CBS is different. CBS just sounds not quite like the BBC, but it's much more tamped down. It's more dignified. It's not as rock and roll. And you kind of want that from your news. Um, I saw an ad for an app, and I can't remember the name of the app. Tell me if you've seen this ad. And it, I think it's the same people that make that jitterbug phone, you know, mm-hmm. where it's people that look like they're 40 years old going, gosh, I've heard a lot about the internet, but I don't know how to operate a phone. <laughs> Have you seen mm-hmm. that commercial, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's, a, there's an app now that um, it's a news app that gives you a little taste of everything so that you're not just listening to one um, take versus another. So instead of getting your news like from a single channel or source, you download In other words, instead of getting your news from an echo chamber, they they mix it up so there's a variety of uh, outlooks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I I cannot remember the name of it. I've only seen the commercial a couple times. But if that's legit, if that app really does try to give you a little bite of everything, that would be Mm -hmm. very civilized. Do you think there's a market for that? Do you think people want that? I think so. And speaking of news, I got it from UPI. An Idaho man walked more than two miles while balancing a baseball bat on his chin to earn a Guinness World Record. David Rush did this to raise money for medical research. Uh, He's uh, won other Guinness uh, awards. He balanced the bat on his chin. It's a Louisville slugger and walked around a track for 41 minutes, 30 seconds, 2.236 2.236 miles. Uh, he has the uh, record now. It, it, the f- former one was under two, uh, two miles. He said he managed to navigate the track by having his wife, Jennifer, shout out instructions when he wandered out of his lane. So c- let's give him a round of applause. Two, over two miles, balancing for like 40 minutes, a baseball bat on his chin. But you know, when he went home, his wife said, well, good job, but that deck needs to be painted, okay? I mean, it's I, it's one thing for the baseball bat. I just can't wait to tell Kevin that a woman shouting out instructions how to stay in your lane could get you into the Guinness <laughs> Book. Won't he be surprised? <laughs> right, straight, right. Straight ahead, it might be a sign of the times, but astrology's having a moment. It's next. It's Bob and Sherry. You read it once. I don't believe that. And then you read it again. I can't believe this. It's Bob and Cherry's. I believe this. Shit. I cannot believe this. Shit. If you spend any time online and you have any social media platform, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, it, it doesn't matter any of the social platforms, you may have noticed that astrology is having a moment. It's beyond a moment. Astrology is having a boom. And there's a really good reason for it. Um, We know now that stress, um, stress comes 
when we're uncertain about future outcomes. That's where stress comes from, which is an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? Stress is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. That's all stress Mm -hmm. is, is stress is uncertainty. You're uncertain about your job or your children or your marriage or the world, right? A loved one's health, you're uncertain. That's where stress comes from. And when that uncertainty is about a negative outcome, Mm -hmm. it's actually worse than knowing in advance that the outcome is going to be negative. So I'll give it to you this way. You know, when you've been in a relationship where things are really rocky and you're afraid that you're going to break up, that period of time where you're thinking and worrying, are we breaking up? Is it over? Is actually harder on your brain and body than the breakup itself. Which sounds crazy until you think back to your own life, all the things you've been uncertain about, not knowing if the bad thing is coming is worse than knowing that the bad thing is coming. That's just how human beings operate. And we happen to be at a moment in human history where there's a lot of stress and uncertainty and a lot of fear of negative outcomes. You're not just worried about the people you love. You're worried that they'll get a sickness that could take them from you. That's very Mm -hmm. real in this pandemic. And you're worried about the economy and you're worried about your job and you're worried about whether or not your kids are going to be able to go to school. Oh, it's so much. In times of extreme uncertainty, people look for ways to get a handle on reality. And astrology is having a moment. And here's the thing. You can think it's bogus and you can think it's BS, but according to... Um, doctors and healthcare professionals. There are some really good things about astrology that might help you right now. Um, Astrology can not only influence the way you think about yourself, but it can validate yourself and it can Mm -hmm. make you feel better about your personal attributes. Like you're a Virgo, Bob. You could be really stressed out by everything that's happening in the world right now. But then you remember that Virgos are detail-oriented and conscientious and you're going to be doing everything you can in your little corner of the world to make things as good as they can because you are a detail-oriented conscientious person right Right. and max is a scorpio and the scorpio is the passionate caretaker of the zodiac scorpios have feelings that run deep and fiery hot and so for all of max's uncertainties and worries during this time he knows one thing for sure he can trust his own feelings he's going to love the people he loves and takes care of them Plus, astrology, especially in the age of social media, has created whole communities where people that are isolated and separated can connect with other people and have this shared interest in common. So you can think it's BS and you can think it's fake and you can think it's nonsense. But if it gives anybody any feeling of, all right, I got this. I have a feeling about myself and the world. Today is going to be a better day then it's a good thing. And that explains why Yeah, I mean, whatever why helps every- you get through the night. That You know, that's the old cliche, right? Well, it, it just shows you this is why astrology is everywhere. It has spiked in popularity. And as a result, understanding why people turn to it in troubled times mm-hmm. is super important. And it turns out that it's a good thing. So don't don't blame don't beat up on yourself if you're on tiktok looking for your moon rising sign or whatever at least you're not outside hitting people with a stick yeah there you go yeah if if it if it makes if it makes you a better person it makes you feel better you know do whatever you want hit yourself with a stick if you have to well i will agree that um not hitting people with a stick is a low bar but humanity you did this to yourself okay i didn't make these rules You did this to you. I'll post this up on our Facebook. You can go check it out. It's Bob and Sherry. A shareable taste of the show. The Fun Size Podcast drops every Thursday on the free Bob and Sherry app. Teachers, teachers, teachers. We love them so much. They do so much. And we realize that more than ever. You know, I was was thinking if, if I were a teacher, I think after a while, I would just have to jerk them around a little bit, the kids around, just to, you know, stay in the game, just to be interested. And I would not be the only person. I found a collection of tweets that people posted about things, that uh, funny things, and some of them kind of shocking, that their teachers have done 
over the years. Would you like to hear a few of them? Mm -hmm. Of course you would. All right. The first one is, uh, let's see, my teacher is funny. It was the hashtag. All my siblings had the same teacher in high school. On the last day of my senior year, my teacher looked at me and said, please tell me you're the last one. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This one is from Rory. One of the English teachers at my old school hated the sound of people clicking their pens open and close repeatedly. So whenever she caught anybody doing it, She'd throw the pen out of the top floor window while the class was required to sing, I believe I can fly. (laughs) Every time, every time. Every day, my history teacher, this is from uh, Texas Heat, uh, my history teacher would turn the TV on ESPN at 10 a.m. to watch the final scores from the night before. He said these games were history in the making. We found out later he had a gambling problem. (laughs) Uh, I worked with a teacher who would nap on the floor of an empty classroom during his prep time. He used textbooks for his pillow. You know what? You know who that is? That's a teacher who's a bartender at night and he's exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. That's somebody with a job. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Let's see. I had a teacher in the seventh grade who would grab his guitar during study hall and sing songs to us about how much he hated his ex-wife. Oh, no. Now, I, you, now, be honest. Wouldn't you love to have been in that class, though, that you could look forward to that? Every once in a while, the guy would reach um, for the... And you, you would never knew, know what the, what the next song was going to be? As a kid, you would love that, but then you grow up and you go, "Oh man!" Right? It's <laughs> it's not right. That. I agree. I know. Uh, this is from Joe. When I was in high school, I had the same science teacher my father did twenty years prior. When teacher on day one was taking attendance, he got a look of horror when he came to my name. He asked if I was related. My dad had blown up the science lab 20 years ago. Uh, this, this one uh, I love. Uh, I went to Catholic high, a Catholic high school, and my math teacher was a nun. She's informing us about an upcoming test. She said to the class, I'm the tester, and you are the testees. <laughs> Sister Linda's <laughs> face got, got kind of red at that point. This one is interesting. It's a hashtag, my teacher is funny. We thought our science teacher was all doom and gloom by saying there will be self-ordering, self-pay stations at grocery stores, at fast food restaurants, etc. This was the late 90s. He told us a lot of jobs would likely disappear. So education was important. Guy was right on the money, wasn't he? He was. He was dead on. Mm -hmm. He was dead on the money. Next one, my teacher had a toy pig collection at the front of the classroom. If you were taught, uh, if you were caught talking during the class, you you had to oink an apology to the pigs for interrupting their learning. (laughs) That's that's, that's awful. That is really awful. My, I can't believe this this teacher got away with this. My Spanish teacher would teach us all the bad words in Spanish. And give us extra credit if we could form sentences using them correctly. Um, those kids remember that Spanish. I can, it's, not, it's not yep. appropriate, and especially yeah. not something grandma right. wants, but those kids yeah. remember it. Laura said, my high school Spanish teacher was showing us a movie when all of a sudden, unbeknownst to her, a sex scene came on. She quickly jumped in front of the screen and told us not to look. She did not realize it was a projector, so the sex scene was still visible. It was just protected. It was projected on her body. (laughs) God bless. No good deed. It got worse. I know. Finally, Logan said, I fell asleep during my post-lunch afternoon college algebra class. My head was laying on my right arm when my professor tapped my left shoulder and whispered, it's been 30 minutes. Time to switch arms. 
<laughs> I must have been horrified. And there it is. This is Bob and Sherry. Now, let's open up the Bob and Sherry Archive Vault. Uh, Civil Shepherd Show, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. We predict that that title is so hackneyed that it would never make it. The syndicated talk show finished dead last among any talk show. Out in Las Vegas, when I was out there, there's a there's a Vegas show called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Is there anyone? There must be There must be a contingent of bus-riding, wind-suited ticket holders who think there's nothing more uproarious than the toilet seat being up or down. Is there that's, no that's one left guess. in America that has not come to terms with the idea that we, it's okay to say that men and women are different today? You and I don't even bother talking about that unless there's a joke in it anymore. Because well, it's, it's, so it's, it's so obvious and so old. And that John Gray guy. I mean, <laughs> I am so sick of him. Is he part of that Vegas show? I bet Absolutely. he is. Absolutely. It's, it's sure. It's his, it's it's his, his concept. Here it goes. Um, men want to solve problems. They just don't want to talk about them. Women sometimes just want to talk about things without having to find a solution. Yeah, that's that the bottom like, line. That's the bottom line. That is the crux of so many people's marital and relationship conflicts. But the idea that there's like going to be a musical number, he left the seat up again. <laughs> I mean, who cares? Is, is this a musical? Yes. yes. How could it be a musical? Oh, my God. I bet that's the worst thing ever produced. You're right. He left the seat up again. And I when bet you go pee, please think of me. <laughs> <laughs> Put that seat down again. I mean, who cares? And then there'll be a very overwrought Andrew Lloyd Webber sort of number that goes, I can't have sex with you when I don't feel you're listening. <laughs> I know you can. You could have sex with mud because you're a man. You only touch me when you, you want, want to screw. <laughs> Why can't you touch me just for nothing? <laughs> you know, we should do one of those parody commercials. And now the hit soundtrack album from the smash off Broadway musical Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Because we could do all of the songs. Your friends are annoying. I hate them around the house. Would it kill you to pick up your socks? <laughs> <laughs> then we could have like a big show stopping number, you know, mute the game, hold my hand. I'm your wife, you be the man. Let's go. <laughs> Where's the remote? Where's the remote? My uterus is not a tracking device. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. The the Vegas show. You know what? what You know what? (laughs) Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis are spinning in their graves. I got to tell you, You for Las Vegas, it's a long way from Glitter Gulch. I'll tell you what. They are spinning. Frank's going, hey, holy. <laughs> Sammy. <laughs> stop, stop talking to the devil. Listen. Up. <laughs> we were up there. We were, we were, you know, giving it to the broads. We were singing. We were drinking. What is this? Men are from Mars. What is this crap? Well, oh. if Frank came back and was in Men are from Mars, Women are the Venus, there were, <laughs> the lights would go down. He'd have the scotch. He'd have the cigarette. And he would say stuff like, quit flapping your jaws, dame. <laughs> Why can't you tell this crap to your sister? (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to hear about the office. Why can't you tell this crap to your sister? That's what most men want, honest to God. (laughs) You know what we are? We are obnoxious. You can hear more from the Bob and Cherry archives at bobandcherry.com. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. I wish I was thinking about myself the other day, and um, I really wish I had more of a middle sort of ground. You know, I'm either way too much of a people pleaser, or I just want to tell people to pound it right all the way. You know, yeah. I just wish I was more, yeah. you know, kind of in the middle. Like, I'll give you an example. We have regular garbage pickup here at the house. You know, I think they come twice a week. Uh, but we also have not that far away. It's a little bit of a drive. Um, 
a landfill area. What you do is they have a guard, they have a, a person, different people, and uh, but although mostly it's one woman, it's the same woman, and she sits in a chair under an um- umbrella because it's hot. And as I'm driving up, uh, the uh, the window went down, and my music is up pretty good. And I was playing some old soul music. Could you could you play the song I was playing, Max? Wicked, wicked, Wilson Pickett with the Midnight Hour, great soul song. So this is on while the window is coming down. And I had it cranked pretty good, as a matter of fact. And I got the phone, and I I hold it over to her, and she, uh, you know, she takes her instrument and zaps it. She goes, all right, sir, you're all good to go. By the way, that's some damn good music you got playing there. I said, thank you very much. He's the best, huh? Yes, sir. And I drove away. And, and I dumped it. Well, then fast forward to uh, the other day, and I'm, uh, I got more trash to take. And I know she's going to be there. I am driving to the dump trying to figure out what song I can program to have playing when the window goes down. <laughs> oh, God, so that you'll get approval. <laughs> and, and so the lady likes it, right? And I'm going, all right, she like Wilson Pickett. So that's, that's the, yeah, it looks about like her era. Maybe some Marvin Gaye this time, Marvin Gaye. So I pulled out, and she wasn't there that day. So it, it really, I went back to the radio. Um, why do I care? Why do I care? Why am I like this guy that, you know, we, we had a plumber that came in and he was a complete ass. And, and he was rough and he was talking, you know, poorly about women. And I, I just didn't like him at all. And yet I'm trying to get as close to being his buddy as I can without, you know, really selling myself out completely. Why do I not just say, hey, man, the way you talk about women, not in my house, okay? Is it because, like, I'm not a big, strong guy? I'm not 6'5", you know, I'm not 220, you know, I'm a small, would I be different if I were that size or is it just the way I was, I was brought up just the codependence of one parent or another? I think that, um, first of all, I'm glad that you don't get belligerent and aggressive with people because you have your face pounded in and that's not good. Like, it's not good to have your face pounded in. There's no glory in that. But I think that you are this way because from your earliest age, you were, I don't want to use the word groomed, but you lived in an environment where every every movement, every gesture, every everything was designed to appease and minimize anger on the part of your dad. Yeah, it, no, right I down know to that. when you yeah. were a little boy telling your brother, "Dad's going for a walk with us. Don't let me talk too much." Like you, you, yeah. you, you, your way of diffusing a bomb is to make friends with the bomb. That's how you defuse a bomb. And yeah. honestly, before you before you get all hard on yourself, there are worse ways to be. Yeah, I suppose so. I just wonder if I was, you know, if I had uh, like a real uh, physicality that was uh, intimidating, if I would handle those things differently. I, I honest to God, I think I would. It's not, it's um, not the best thing to say that, but I think I would. I mean, maybe maybe you would. I've. I, nothing good comes of that. That's how people end up, you know, with their beautiful faces punched in and also shot. Like there's just nothing good that comes of being well, aggressive. Well, it always it doesn't always have to be that way. I mean, sometimes if you just say, "Hey, pal, you don't talk like that in my house." You know? Is there a way? Is there a middle ground between groveling and making a playlist? And puffing out your chest and getting belligerent. Is there some place in the middle? That- you know, there is, it. There is, but it's a small lane. I have found it's a very narrow lane to be able to pull that off. I um, the o- I don't get, I get a different, like no man would come into my house and talk smack about women in front of me because I am a woman. Mm-hmm. Right? But mm-hmm. we, long time ago, we had a, I can't remember what he came for because Kev does almost everything, but we had a guy and he made a joke to Kevin about, you know, wives, right? Can't live with them. Can't kill them. And Kevin, um, uh, Kevin started laughing and I was sitting right there 
And I said, no, nah, but he sleeps with one eye open. <laughs> and the guy, yeah, right. You can, get, you can like, get away with that. Yeah, the yeah. guy's like, oh, ho, ho. But there yeah. are people that don't even realize that they're That's true. That's true. I, I'm just, you know, I'm not going to change. Next time I go to the dump, I'll play The Temptations. I think she'll like that very much. A little they Marvin Gaye. Yeah, you know? that's right. Test her, test her out on some later Motown. See how she feels about, like, the Supremes and stuff. Yeah. Okay. It's Bob and Sherry. The Off-Air Podcast, the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. Oddcast. Download on the free Bob and Sherry app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Bob and Sherry. It may still be hot as anything in a lot of parts of the country, but it is September, and that means it is officially pumpkin spice season, apple picking season, sweater and boots season. This is like the happiest time of the year for people that are obsessed with fall. And do you know that being obsessed with fall is like a really big thing in the U.S. of A.? That so many people, that it's an actual psychological condition to be right. obsessed with fall. Well, so I tell you, with, with global warming, it's going to become even more obsessive for a lot of people because you're just saying, give me a break from the heat. Go ahead. Well, I w- I, so I was reading this really fascinating article about why people are obsessed with fall. And there's a couple of things in there that are super interesting. Like for starters, fall, um, there are, are a lot of memory triggers in the September, October, November months that Mm -hmm. remind you of really happy experiences that you've had with friends and family, things that you look forward to, holidays. Like September is the beginning of looking forward to, uh, for football fans, to football games and and for Halloween people to Halloween and Thanksgiving and ultimately Christmas, right? So there's Mm -hmm. all these positive nostalgic associations with fall, but this is something that you're going to really like. There's something in our biology as creatures, temperatures cooling off trigger positive moods in people. Oh, I agree. Yeah. And we found that um, they, they did a study like, I don't know, 10 years or so ago with a bunch of people. When it's colder outside, people are more likely to want to watch or go to movies that um, are a psychological boost. That's why you see so many romantic comedies released in the fall. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, because that's when people that's Mm -hmm. when people choose them. People associate the weather getting cooler with um, wanting to snuggle and have like intimate contact with other people. Well, don't you think October is the most popular month of all uh, now? I think it is. I think for a lot of people, yeah. I mean, it's fall. I mean, depending on where you live. Is fall is your fall, favorite season? It, it, um, you know, I can't, I can't give it all to fall because of the um, trauma that I used to experience going back to school in September uh, as a kid. I've never really gotten over that. But if you're asking what time of the year would, you, would I like to walk out into a golf course, it's uh, the end of September through October. See, the fall is a little melancholy for me. I'm a spring person, I think. I am too. I mean, I love I the. I know what you mean. I love the changing leaves and and all of that. But like every other American, I associate fall with going back to school. And I loved yeah. school. Don't get me wrong, but but it was the loss of freedom. Right now, you're back in the groove, and right. the days are shorter. Which if you if you're someone who loves daylight and sunlight, that's not great. And there's just a melancholy feeling. You know, you know that every day in fall is so precious because you know that the next one could turn really blustery and gray and cold on a dime. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you grew up in a place that is a cold weather place, that first day where fall gives it up and winter has arrived is such a scary day. Because you say to yourself, oh, man, I've got at least four, maybe five months to get through who knows what with snow and ice and all of the aggravation that goes along with it. I could remember the days clicking in. I would go to school in the morning and it felt okay. You know, it was it was crisp, but it felt okay. But I remember getting out and the weather had totally changed. And I got on the bus and I went, oh, my God, winter 
has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like that in Wyoming. In some parts of the country, like mm-hmm. you get a false, you get what they used to call Indian summer, right? You get a you get right, like right. a heat wave late in the right. fall. Or you might get like a freaky run of a couple of cold, blustery days, but then it warms up again. Let me tell you something. In Wyoming Wyoming has no patience for that kind of wishy-washiness. In Wyoming, one day it's fall and the next day it's winter and it's going to stay winter for the next six months. And if you can't take it, get the hell out. Nobody wants you (laughs) Yeah, that's right. You don't deserve the summer if you can't take the winter. So I'm with you, but I think you have to grow up in a place where winter is a switch getting flipped to understand what we're talking about. Because so you know it. You feel that sinking feeling of, oh, no, now it's winter. Because, Unless, I mean, do, doing this job, you know, you're, you're so uh, bombarded with what people are thinking because of all the websites you go to, all of the input that you get to in radio. And in the last few years, all of a sudden, for me, fall has taken over as I look out upon my beautiful country because all the jokes about uh, uh, women getting the um, uh, what's the, the coffee drink? Pumpkin the, uh, spice. Pumpkin spice. All the pump. My, my wife was into pump. So excited! Oh, it's almost pumpkin spice time. Um, oh, the kids are going back to school. They're going to be out of my hair. Oh, we're going to the pumpkin patch. All of that just it took on a more romantic and glamorous uh, place in Americans' minds. I think. Well, I mean. You know, you can hate on the pumpkin spice thing and on people who love fall, but at least it's something that Americans are positive about, right? Yeah, I'm not hating now, on it. As, I think as nice. I'm saying that, I'm going to get 15 crazy DMs into my Facebook from people who are like, I hate fall. I hate everything about <laughs> fall. It's Bob and Sherry. Instant access to the podcast, podcast, and fun side. Just download the free Bob and Sherry app. I think it's this way all over the country. I'll get some heads nodding here. Everywhere I go, I see the same sign, now hiring, or we're hiring. And the first ones were restaurants because so many people, you know, gave up becoming servers or bartenders. They decided to go someplace else, or the restaurant was half closed down. That's why they need more help. But I'm I'm, I'm seeing it everywhere. Um, uh, medical spas, now hiring. Uh, department stores, now hiring. Left and right. And so I stopped for a moment at this post that some people did saying, this was the best gig I ever had. And some of the people are still doing these jobs. So I'll give you some ideas. If you're planning to make a change and you don't know where to go, listen to what these folks found. First one is tour guiding. I am a water tour guide in Hawaii. I make four times what the average person my age makes. Half the time, I'm chilling in the water or on a boat. The other half, I'm a lifeguard, information dude, and boat flight attendant. LOL, thank you, tourists. That sounds pretty good for the right person, doesn't it? But isn't that like a one in a million job? (laughs) I mean... Like, it's no. not like you can, you can't hear that and go, you know what? I heard Bob on that radio show say that uh, I should be like a water guide. So that's what I'm going to do now. I mean, I would think that would be such a rare and difficult job to get. It, it very well may be. And you have to be living in the right place. All right. Here's something that's not as glamorous, but listen to this job. I do administration work for the government. My pay is 55000 a year. At best, I get five emails a day with about two that actually concern me. No BS. My phone has rung about 20 times since June 1st. On a super busy day, I have about 45 minutes worth of work to do. That, um, I think there are more jobs. I think there are actually more jobs that have about 45 minutes worth of work. Do you really? Yeah, I do. Maybe not as many as there used to be, but... I've known I've known people who've just point. I, we've I've had listeners tell me, oh, I don't do anything all yeah. day at work. <laughs> I know we have. We, we did a show once, and we had people call in. If uh, if you work less than an hour a day, um, tell us about it. And more people called than I would than I thought would have called. Now this is hard work, but uh, I'll just tell you what the guy does. I am a trash truck driver. It's a fairly simple job with a higher salary than being a teacher. He's the guy up. He's not getting yeah. off and, you know, he's not on the back of the thing. He's just driving it and those those big arms come out. 
Listen to this one, international pilot. Now, you got to obviously have a lot of skill here. I make $200,000 a year in a wide body, for, and I'm a, I'm a first officer. None of the decisions fall on me. I fly one leg to Europe. I get a couple of hours nap on each leg. I get 24 to 48 hours in a cool city, and then I fly one leg home. Get a nap on the way home. When I'm home, there's nothing I could conceivably do for work, so I just get to enjoy as many days off as I can. Don't get me wrong, the training's intense, but man, my job now is super easy. In our country, a forklift driver usually gets as much money as a person in middle management. This guy, he doesn't he doesn't tell you much of anything. He says, there is nothing like owning a parking lot. You know, you don't think about that, but what could be better than owning a parking lot? There's no plumbing, mm-hmm. there's no electricity. You know what's close to it? I I had a girlfriend for a couple of years. Uh, She was divorced. And so she's telling me about, um, you know, as women do, how much she was pissed off at her her previous husband. And I said, well, give me an example. And she said he was going to take me to Ireland. She was Irish. And uh, he said, I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to do an investment with my father in um, storage units. And it just ticked her off. And then she found out, at least way back when, it was nothing but a license to print money. Once you, once you have the unit built, yeah, yeah. you got to have a guy sitting there, you know, maybe to let people in and out. But that's about it. Notary mobile. This is one I never saw coming. Mobile notaries uh, who do home signings. Mm. A mobile notary can line up four to seven appointments a day and make 200 to $300 per day. One of the best weekend gigs that I have ever had. You can pay your rent by working one extra Saturday a month. Um, I'm sorry, because right now I'm I'm like struggling and rethinking every life choice that I've ever made that I don't own a parking lot. <laughs> I, I may not. I may not I be able to get past it. I may need to take the rest of the day. Yeah. Just well, if you're it. thinking, why did why did I not own a parking lot? What was I, I know. thinking? And they're like all automated now. You don't even have to be there. This is Bob and Sherry. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the Bob and Sherry podcast and the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. We would love if you would subscribe, rate and review, and share it with a friend on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you go. And thank you again for listening. Hey, I'm EJ Dixon. And I'm Brittany Spanos. We're both Rolling Stone writers. Brittany covers pop music, fandom, and race. And EJ reports on everything internet culture related, from influencers to far-right extremist groups to OnlyFans. And we both spend an insane amount of time on TikTok. Literally so many hours. Every single day. My feed is all wacky family stories, aesthetically pleasing cooking videos, and hot guys. And mine is primarily Y2K makeup tutorials, true crime conspiracy theories, and bisexual thirst traps. So it feels right that we put all those hours of scrolling and laughing at our phones to more productive use. That's why we're hosting Don't Let This Flop, a weekly podcast about what's happening on TikTok. We'll keep you up to date on the big trends, the wackiest stories, and who is who in the TikTok extended universe. There'll be interviews with content creators we follow, fellow journalists who have reported brilliantly on the app, and much more. As fellow millennials, we understand how overwhelming it can be to try to keep up with who's dating who, what dance is trending, or who's getting canceled. So we've created this podcast to try to keep you and us up to speed. You don't want to miss it. Subscribe to us on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcast fix. And please, don't let this flop. We're joking, but also not really. 